Bonjour, bonjour everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cyril. I have been a stem cell researcher for quite some time and this is why I can tell you about the science behind skincare ingredients. And I introduce myself with my beautiful dogs, Quabao. Um, he is a four month old French uh, bulldog and I will let him sleep while I continue on my video. Hmm? Okay, so for today's video, I have my one of my favorite uh, subjects, which is, of course, sunscreen. If you are not new to my content, you will know that I always promote to wear sunscreen every single day of the year, whatever it is, um, a sunny day or a cloudy day, wherever you live, unless you live like really in the north and you don't have um, any sun during the day. In that case, obviously, you don't need to wear sunscreen but if you are in daylight you do need a good sunscreen and i remind you that the uv light that we get from the sun is composed of uvb the uvb are the main red that grilled the top surface of our skin and that are responsible for a sunburn but remember that uvb are not solely responsible for a sunburn you also need uva and in the UVA, we have the UVA type 2 that are the closest to UVB and UVA type 1 and especially UVA type 1. We have now clear evidence that show that the daily exposition to UVA type 1 when you are in the street just walking for five minutes, but even in front of the windows are the ones that are going to age us the most. And remember that the aging process is a cumulative process, so it's a little bit of uh, UV today, then tomorrow, then the day after tomorrow, and etc. In five and ten years, which translate in some fine lines, and then in in the, uh, stronger wrinkle, saggy skin, and etc. Obviously, the aging process is also due simply to the genetics. It's not only environmental and. Uh, whatever the case, we are all going to age, but we can limit the impact on the environment on the skin. And one of the key points is to always moisturize your skin and to wear your sunscreen. So today I'm going to share with you my ultimate 10 sunscreen mistake. So the first one, and I've seen it um, quite often, especially on Instagram, is to mix your sunscreen with uh, something. And usually the something is something with a pigment. So uh, like, like a bronzing lotion, for example, you had a couple of drops and then you mix your uh, sunscreen to make it darker and to correct the white cast. Why this is very bad is because you are going to disrupt the dispersion of the filters of the sunscreen and therefore there is a chance that the SPF will decrease as well as the UVA protection. So you need to be very careful and always remember that you need to have an even layer of the sunscreen. The second mistake, and I can't believe it that I have to, to tell this, is to apply your sunscreen before you moisturize. And, and how I've discovered this uh, very huge mistake is when I saw the skincare routine from Khloe Kardashian, I would have expected that someone who has uh, so much money and, and who is so famous would know that you need to apply your sunscreen as the last step just before makeup. And by putting a moisturizer, especially a moisturizer that have an all base content, the only thing that you are going to do is to, again, disrupt the film of the sunscreen. So use your sunscreen after your moisturizer. And if you want to apply makeup, apply makeup on top. Which leads me to the third mistake, which is to buff your makeup on top of your sunscreen. So something that you always need to keep in mind is that how a sunscreen works, it's by creating literally an even layer that is going to shield your skin from the UVs. If you disturb this layer by applying another moisturizer, by touching your face constantly, or by simply rubbing your foundation with those kind of uh, brushes by this uh, movement, you are going to disrupt this layer and therefore you are going to decrease the protection. So what I always recommend is to dab your foundation on top of your sunscreen. And also depending on the formula, you need to wait for the sunscreen to set. So my favorite method when I want to wear makeup is to dab it, is to dab the foundation on top after my sunscreen has set. And usually I use one of those Korean cash puff. And the way I do it, I do all my skincare routine. I then apply a very thick layer of my sunscreen. So the sunscreen of today is the Beach Chill from Crave Beauty. Then I wait for the sunscreen to set. So I usually wait uh, around 10 
minutes and if I want to wear a foundation, I take my sponge, I use some of the sunscreen to wet it and then I put my foundation on my hand, I distribute it on top of my sponge and I dab it all over my face and I never drag the sponge again to protect the layer of sunscreen. The fourth mistake that seems also to be pretty trending and uh, I've discovered this mistake thanks to Lab Muffin Beauty Science. If you don't know her, I also invite you to check her YouTube uh, channel. She is um, a chemist, she has a PhD in chemistry. So if you want to know more about the chemistry of cosmetics ingredients rather than the biologic effect, which is uh, my part, go and follow her. And uh, she has uh, a video and also uh, on her Instagram some blog posts to strongly discourage you to do any DIY of your sunscreen. You cannot make a proper sunscreen at home. This is something that is uh, impossible. All those brands that claim that have a natural um, SPF, they are not natural at all. They require a lot of advanced chemistry in order to disperse evenly the filter in the cream. And this is not something that we can do at home. You cannot buy zinc oxide and titanium dioxide and mix it uh, with shea butter or whatever to make a proper SPF, the dispersion will not be uh, good. Mistake number five is to not reapply your sunscreen. So the SPF rating, but also the UVA protection factors in many countries is evaluated only for two hours. After two hours, it is not regulated and therefore you don't know if the protection will still be here. And most likely what will happen is that you will have a decrease of the protection. My favorite uh, quote is from Paula Begun and she is the founder of Paula Chose is to be sun smart. So a good example is that you are going for work where you work you are not exposed to direct sunlight because you are not close to a windows for all day long so probably in that case you are fine with only one proper application in the morning especially if you are using a sunscreen that use the new generation of filters that are very photostable and that form this invisible and strong veil on the skin. So I'm thinking about Japanese sunscreen, obviously. You can check my videos. I have a video on Anessa sunscreen, on Ali sunscreen, and also on Skin Aqua. All of them really form this protective uh, film. You can also use um, the European sunscreen. If you are in the United States, you have two choices. You can choose a sunscreen that uses zinc oxide as a UVA uh, filter and in that case this one is photostable and this is uh, the type of filter that I would uh, recommend or you can use one with evobenzone and in that case you need to hope that the evobenzone will be at least stable for uh, the two hours but because I am not sure I prefer to recommend the one with zinc oxide. So remember, if you are exposed to a lot of sun because you are spending all day long outside, reapply every two hours. If you use the new generation of filters, you are pretty safe with reapplying your sunscreen every three hours. But if you are in the beach and if you like to, to bath yourself, you even need to reapply it even more frequently than the two recommended hours. So the mistake number six is to choose the wrong sunscreen for your skin type. So let me give you uh, two different examples. The first one is that you are someone who has pretty oily skin and in that case you need to find a matte sunscreen and not something that will be very greasy or else it will be unbearable for you. So a good example would be for example this one the Cicavit cream from the French brand SVR the SPF uh, 50 plus. I love this sunscreen, but it is quite greasy. If you have oily skin, this one won't be suitable for you. Another example, which is also an excellent sunscreen, and I don't think that I've ever mentioned it in one of my videos, this is the Depiderm from the French brand Uriage. This one also is uh, pretty excellent, but again, if you have oily skin, this one won't be suitable for you. Another example is also this one from Ultrasan, the face uh, fluid, if, if you have super oily skin, this one uh, will not work for you. However, if you have Oily skin, the Anessa, the perfect uh, UV skincare milk, SPF 50 plus, this one would be excellent. Or it also could be the Inner 3, this is the Triple Care. Uh, this one is a mineral based sunscreen. It is also an excellent one. 
Another example would be also if you are acne prone. When you are acne prone, it is very difficult to find a proper sunscreen for you. The safest one are obviously the mineral based sunscreens, especially because they contain zinc oxide. One of my favorite one is probably this one from Industry, the Triple Care. I really love uh, this formula. There is a white cast, but you can wear makeup um, on top. But this one is a pretty excellent uh, one. Another example, if you are acne prone, would be to use the um, one from Claire, the Soft Airy UV Essence, because it only contains two filters, and most likely with this one, uh, your skin will not break out more. Or you can also use the unscented version of the Purito, which is the Santella Green Level Unscented Sun SPF 50 Plus PR Rating of 4 Plus It, that also use the same filters. If you have a darker skin tone, those ones are perfectly for everyday use. Be careful if you are if you have fair skin tone. I do not recommend uh, this one and also the Claire's uh, when you are exposed to a lot of sun because I don't think that the protection is uh, adequate. The last example is from one of my recent videos on Ali skincare and this is the Extra UV Perfect. This one also uh, could be an excellent one for those of you who have um, acne prone skin and you can check my review. On it. So the seven skincare mistake that also goes with uh, the number six is to be scared of organic filters and there are also a lot of polemics around it also due to drunk elephant again because they have bound um, organic filters. Organic filters is a huge huge family and there are many different um, filters. Unfortunately if you are in the United States you only have a few option and they are not the quiet one because the filters for example are not photo stable so if you can try to order a Japanese uh, sunscreen and it will you know, solve most of your problem if you are really scared to be sensitive to organic filters what I would advise you to try is the one from Avi from Ali that I've just uh, showed you so the extra UV Perfect, the softer UV essence or the one from Purito with the unscented version. Those are also only use two filters with which is Uvenol T150 as a UVB filters and Uvenol A plus as a UVA type one uh, filters. Or another example that is unfortunately not uh, found enough and I think this is uh, mainly uh, Japanese technology which is encapsulated filter just at the one that you find in the Skin Aqua which is the UV Super Monster Milk SPF 50 plus. So this one most likely will not have any problem with it. And it's also fragrance free, alcohol free. So this um, sunscreen is also close to uh, perfection. And this one most likely will uh, suit a lot of different skin type. It does have a minimal white cast. So be aware of this. The last thing that I want to tell you about organic filters is that they are the one that will provide the highest UVA protection. And you want this in your skincare routine because remember that what age you are the UVA type one. So the mistake number eight is to under apply your sunscreen. And this is something that is done so, so frequently. People always under apply sunscreen, which in a way I understand because a lot of sunscreen are, are really greasy. They are sticky, especially the one that you find in the United States are pretty dreadful. Also the one in, in Europe, we do have a very high protection because the requirement for sunscreen is super high. So you know that when you are buying whatever SPF 50 plus, you know that the UVA protection would be of a minimal of 20 using the PPD uh, methods, which is excellent, but also the texture is most of the time pretty dreadful. In that case, when you force yourself to use the sunscreen, you are going to under apply, which is a huge mistake because you are going to decrease the protection. So if you are very unsure and you don't know if you are under applying a sunscreen, is to use a teaspoon, like one fourth of a teaspoon. I prefer to use one fourth of a teaspoon than um, half of a teaspoon for the whole face and the neck because one fourth of a teaspoon is the minimal, and I said the minimal dose just for the face and another one for your neck. So what I advise you is to use um, one fourth of a teaspoon for your face so you pour your sunscreen in it then you dot it all over your face and you massage it and you do the same for your neck so please don't under apply sunscreen mistake number nine and this one is mainly only for those of you who live in the United States is to not mix two different sunscreen that contains one avobenzone and with zinc oxide 
because zinc oxide is going to degrade the benzyl. So you need to be very, very careful uh, with this, which is also why if you are in the United States and you still want to use an American uh, sunscreen, try to choose the one that uses zinc oxide as UVA uh, filters. Unfortunately, in the market, you don't have a lot of options. Or like I said previously, try to order online on amazon.com a uh, Japanese sunscreen and you will be completely, and you will be safe. And the last one, the sunscreen mistake number 10, is to not apply an even layer because the quantity is very important to not disturb. The layer is very important, but also a big, big criteria is to have an even layer all over your face. You don't want to have a patchy application. So in that case, choose the methods that is the easiest and the most convenient for you. So you can use the Dr. Sam printing method and what she does is that she dots the correct amount of sunscreen all over the face using the 13 uh, methods. So in that case, you do three big dots on your forehead and etc on your cheeks and then you massage in the uh, sunscreen to have an even layer what i like to do is to work by area so usually on my cheek area i divide it in two areas this top part and this other part and then i massage it and i spend and i always like to spend some time to uh, massage in the product because it's very important that all the crevasses of your skin are really saturated with the sunscreen and then i move to another area and every time even though i don't use um, a teaspoon i applied a lot of sunscreen also remember that the texture of your sunscreen will also impact the evenness of the layer of sunscreen so a good example is a milk texture compared to a cream so this one this is the anessa the perfect uv sunscreen skin care milk i have a review on it this one is a milk it's very watery so therefore when you are going to apply it a little bit goes a really long way it's very easy to have a streaky application so make sure that even though those um, texture are very elegant and very pleasant to spend sometimes to really not spread it too much and what i like to do with those kind of milk is first to apply a heavy coat all over my face so like i said i work by area i work like for five minutes or something like that sometimes less and i reapply a second uh, coat a little bit more liberally to really make sure to increase the concentration of the sunscreen to not have a patchy application. So this is opposed to a cream formula such as this one from Uriage. This is the French brand. This is the um, cream very high protection SPF 50 plus. This one is really a cream. So therefore the application will be more even from scratch because of the texture. So always remember to saturate your skin with uh, sunscreen this is a very crucial point in order to have the level of protection on the package. So I hope you like this video. Comment on below if you have any uh, question, question regarding uh, my sunscreen mistakes and tell me if I have forgotten any mistakes. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to ring the bell to not miss any of my new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram. I have a lot of content there. I am Cyril. Laurent, I thank you so so much for watching me and I will see you next time with my dog. Bye bye, au revoir.